So in the second part of this tutorial I just want to go through these export settings on this side of this dialog box but before I actually go through the bits and pieces here I just want to point out that when I've finished if I was to click this Q button at the bottom I would be adding to the Adobe Media Encoder Q to export from Adobe Media Encoder whereas if I click export I'm going to export immediately from Premiere Pro with the current settings now I actually prefer to use Adobe Media Encoder I think it's less clunky you can actually get to the bits and pieces you want and choose the settings you want a lot quicker if you're going directly from the Adobe Media Encoder although we can queue it from here and send it to Adobe Media Encoder and Adobe Media Encoder would open and we could work through there likewise we could actually open Adobe Media Encoder and select the sequence without even having Premiere Pro open and that actually is my preferred way of working unless I've got a particular reason why I really need to get into these export settings so for instance sometimes people want me to export out say back to a format that I started with say onto tape so that it can be used on a different format so people can actually take it into their system and check things out for broadcast in which case I might actually click this one here which is match sequence settings so the original sequence was an MPEG HDV format and so I'm actually going to be exporting an MPEG preview or an HDV format however that can't be viewed on the internet so you need to be very careful about clicking this match sequence settings at the top it looks very attractive because as you click at it everything looks over here as if it's going to look great but the format it's chosen isn't really very usable unless you're going to a professional system where people recognize it and can use it on a broadcast system so that's not really the right approach to take for exporting most options however when you click format you do have a whole bunch of options you've got audio formats that you can output to you've got video formats that you can output to and you've got image sequences that you can output to so we've got DPX sequences here or Targa, TIFF, PNG sequences so why would I want to export an image sequence rather than a movie file you would want to export an image sequence if you were going to take whatever you are exporting and use it once again inside another editing program perhaps re-import it into Premiere Pro as a background image or background images that you're going to use again and again or take it into After Effects as a background element that you want to use again and again you tend to output image sequences pretty much as lossless in other words they're not going to have any compression applied to them so you're going to have the highest quality version you can so that you can re-import it and use it so you can export image sequences but do bear in mind that an image sequence will not export audio so if you choose an image sequence and you want it to be linked with audio later on you might also perhaps want to choose an audio format that you export to as well and then link them up further down the line now you do have different options here as I say I think you get a better range of options and it's easier to use inside the media encoder but you've got camera options and you've got compression options for use on the internet such as H.264 H.264 being the common one that's used to produce an MPEG-4 file which is for YouTube, Vimeo and what have you so if I click on H.264 I can go through some of the settings here firstly you need to look at presets if you drop the preset button down you'll see that there is an awful lot of them and again this is another reason why I prefer Media Encoder because you can get to them through tabs because if I click this down hour at the bottom and keep scrolling you're going to see that there's an awful lot of options going to come through we've got Vimeo, we've got YouTube, all sorts of bits and pieces and you just need to choose something that's going to output that matches the original footage so say you're an NTSC and you have a frame rate of 29.97 then you might want to look at this output here YouTube HD 1080p 29.97 or if you prefer Vimeo then you've got the Vimeo option which is going to give you the same option if you've got PAL footage 25 frames per second you see you've got PAL options and PAL options here for HD you've got standard definition settings you've got smaller versions so you've got 720 you've got smaller versions and you can choose whichever ones are going to be suitable for your footage what's the difference between things like YouTube and Vimeo and HD up here it's going to be things called bitrate and that's to do with how much information is going to be streamed so these HD ones up here are really for television because they're going to have very high bit rates and then I think Vimeo's got about 5 megabits per second YouTube something like 8 megabits per second so if you turn around and say I know that I want my project to work and look good on say a YouTube format which is a very common one to choose then I can select that and it's going to tell me here in the summary exactly what's going on so we've got the source footage here 
but we can see that the output, you can see where it's going to go at the moment, we can see it's 1920 by 1080, 25 frames per second progressive. This says VBR stands for variable bitrate, two passes, which means it's very high quality, and you can see the target bitrate and the maximum bitrate. And if I just very briefly go to the Vimeo one, I'm going to have to scroll down, give me a minute. And there we've got the Vimeo one. If I click on that one there, you'll see it's very similar, except we've got a different target bit rate and a maximum bit rate and possibly a slightly different audio format. So the changes are very small, but you've got a sense from the output summary here of what this preset has chosen. If you need to make changes to the preset, you then need to come to these tabs down here, particularly video and audio. For example, I can change the width and the height. So say I had a non-standard width and height, I can change those here, and then I could then click this button up here and save it as a preset if I wish to. And you'll see that if I want to, I can get in and change the frame rate. There's lots of different options there I can play with. So if I'm working with some very high frame rate footage, say 50 frames per second or 60 frames per second, I can change that here. I can change field orders, aspect ratios, HD, so computer screens and what have you tend to work on square pixels. And you can choose your video to standard, whether it's NTSC and PAL. So you can play around with those bits and pieces. You can even play with your encoding rates. Just to explain this, you've got three options. Constant bit rate, variable bit rate with one pass, and variable bit rate with two passes. The variable bit rate with two passes is going to do a, an encode through twice. So it's going to take a long time to encode out. However, the end result is going to be higher quality. Constant bit rate is going to be far quicker to export. The only disadvantage is it's not going to have quite such high quality when you get to transitions and changes because it's going to give a constant bit rate regardless of what's happening on screen whereas a variable bit rate will see that changes are taking place and increase the bit rate to cope with those changes those transitions and what have you and when it goes through twice it does an even better job if you go very high on these bit rates you're going to end up with very big files so for instance we've got here this um, Vimeo setting set at 5 megabits per second and you'll see that it's 2 megabytes just for these few seconds that I'm exporting here but if I choose a different export format, say one of those HD ones, which is something like 25 megabits per second, so let's choose that one there, you'll suddenly see that what was going to be 2 megabytes at 5 megabits per second, let's look at what we've got down here, 32 megabits per second, suddenly gone up to 14 megabytes. So just beware that if you start to take these very high, they're not going to stream over the internet. It's not really going to be able to cope with the bit rates. This is for high definition television that we're actually looking at here. So you just need to be a little bit careful of what you choose. And then, of course, you've got things such as audio settings, which are very similar. You can get in and choose whatever's going to work best for your audio settings. And you have a little tab here called Filter. Now, you say, why would I want to filter? You've got a Gaussian blur, and you can add a tiny bit of blur. It's to do with noise and ease of encoding. If you do add a slight filter, you're going to reduce the noise in the image that the encoder has to encode. So it's actually going to be slightly quicker and possibly slightly smaller, the end results, if you've got a little bit of blur. So if you've got a very noisy image, particularly, sometimes it's worth sticking on the blur and having a little bit of blur, which is going to actually make the encoding process quicker, easier, and possibly give you a smaller end result. Then we've got the multiplexers that we can look at, how are we going to export it to? At the moment, we're going to be leaving it at MP4 and standard. And if you need to export this and have it immediately upload to your FTP server, you can actually stick all that information in directly here. And when it's finished exporting, you can have it upload directly to your server ready to go. OK, so these are these kinds of buttons here. The ones down here, frame blending is if you have changed the frame rate in some way. So you would only enable frame blending if you have changed, say, slowed something down and you want the frames to look better as they blend to get a smoother look. So you'd only do that really when there's a frame rate issue. Usually if I've slowed something down, I would use frame blending. It gives a better result. Previews, I generally don't use previews. I like things to encode out from, from scratch when I'm doing my final output. However, if you want to get a quick output done, and you've already got preview files which are automatically generated inside Premiere Pro, then what you can do is use those previews for a quick output. Um, but if you're doing your final output, I usually don't advise to use previews. Let it encode from scratch. It'll take a bit longer, but you'll probably end up with a better result than just using your preview files. 
and maximum render quality is to do with scaling and actually believe it or not it's scaling down so it's taking a big image and scaling it down say an HD image to use on standard definition and you want the detail to look really sharp then you're, you're going to use this use maximum render quality so if you've scaled an image down to fit it on screen so you've got an image taken on a DSLR which is much bigger than the actual sequence size and you scaled it down to fit you might then turn around and say well actually I'm going to use maximum render quality because I want to keep the image quality as high as possible the only other button here we've got is the metadata one and you can choose the metadata to be written to output when you click that it takes you into the metadata settings and you can choose to embed it in the output file so that whatever data you have included is going to be embedded with that file so that wherever it goes say for instance copyright information rights management or whatever can be included in there and you have got control of that file okay so once you've selected all your settings you can then export directly from Premiere Pro and it will export it and you will not be able to use Premiere Pro until the export has completed which can be frustrating particularly if you've got a very large sequence you can wait hours and hours and you can't use Premiere Pro at all or alternatively you can click the Q button and when you click the Q button Adobe Media Encoder is opened up and when Adobe Media Encoder is opened up a different way of working is opened up to us here is the Media Encoder there is the project dropped in ready to go and I'm going to cover this in detail in future tutorials.